Hi, I'm Earl Parson, and welcome to Quonset Q&A. I'm an architect who is obsessed with Quonset huts, and I'm here to share my knowledge and information with you uh, so that you can have a successful Quonset build of your own. So today on the show, I am going to be talking about two related topics, which are um, end walls and framing in the Quonset hut, as well as insulation. So I've gotten a couple of great questions where people have written in and asked me their questions. So um, there's a, a great discussion on the Facebook group about this stuff, and uh, a couple of people reached out to me directly with specific questions about, about these topics, so I figured it was a good, a good chance this week to go over these things. So uh, if you're not in our Facebook group, go to clevermoderns.com slash group, and that will redirect you to the Facebook group directly. You can request um, to join the group. We'd love to have you in the group. It's a lot of fun, and everyone's sharing a lot of info about what's going on with their Kwanzaa builds over there. So on um, the questions that I've gotten, a uh, question came from Josh. And uh, Josh writes in and says, I'm interested to know more about the inside ceiling framing of the building as we hope to put a second floor in ours. And also about the venting as we're thinking about a bathroom on the second level and spray foam insulation. Uh, and I want to know how to keep the seal intact in the house. So uh, a few different uh, things here that we're going to touch on. And let me just say, um, so for venting, uh, there's a couple of related aspects of that that I'm going to go over in a future video, probably next week. So stay tuned for that. But then as far as you know, framing within the building, so you want to uh, realize that for a second floor, um, you cannot support a second floor structure on the arch directly, right? So it's a metal arch. It's just designed to be self-supporting and to handle the snow loads and things on the outside. But it's not designed for the second floor to actually attach to that, okay? You can attach... Um, framing like wall framing a wall up inside and stabilizing it by attaching it to the metal or uh, ceiling framing you can attach to the inside of the metal and I'm going to talk about that a little bit but the actual floor structure needs to be supported by walls within the building and not from directly attaching the floor to the arches so um, and then uh, he's asking about foam so then what we're also uh, on my other question that got sent in this week. It's from um, from Mike uh, Monaco, who has written in, and I've gotten to know Mike a little bit through Instagram, uh, where he's shared some photos of his Quonset build and reached out to me, and we've uh, discovered each other there and interacted a little bit, and he sent me this great email that's pretty long, and I'm not going to read the whole thing in the interest of brevity, but... Um, but Mike's got a great story here, and you you know if you want to follow him on Instagram, I'll go ahead and shout him out here. And if you look at um, Instagram, and you go to Black Mike twenty three oh nine on Instagram, Black Mike twenty three oh nine is uh, the Instagram of of Mike, and he's a cinematographer, takes some beautiful photos. Um, you'll probably enjoy his Instagram feed, and you can see some pictures of his Quonset build there, which is cool. Thanks for sharing those, Mike. And so uh, among the questions that he's asking about are um, insulating and spray foam versus the blanket insulation that can come from the manufacturers. And he's referencing Steelmaster, and my building is from Steelmaster, but I am not uh, using their insulation. So we are going to use spray foam at the compound on our buildings, and we're not going to we are not going to use the blankets. But they don't seem like a bad product to me, and Let's look at some images of insulation and talk about that. And there's pros and cons to both. Uh, and it's really a kind of an individualized um, decision, right? So I just threw a Google image search on the screen for Quonset Hut insulation. So if you look at this image, so this is from Steelmaster. This is one of their one of their images, and that's their product. So it's basically like a blanket with plastic facing um, I'm not even clear if it's faced on both sides. I've never worked with it myself. But the way it works is uh, you have your bolt on the inside of the metal. And when you, when you bolt the building together, there's a few threads of the bolt sticking out on the inside. 
And so what, what they sell with this to attach this insulation it is, um, let me make this bigger even here, right? So with this, you have these metal, um, there's a kind of stem that attaches to the bolt, right? And then from that, you, uh, you push the blanket of insulation on, and then you have a kind of washer, kind of locking washer, I guess, that presses on over that. And that's what you see here uh, on this grid on the building interior. And that holds this insulation blanket in place. And it also looks like running along at this along this line uh, appears to be some kind of tape. So I'm assuming that is to um, make the vapor barrier continuous. Um, and you can see, I think it looks sort of like up here. So there's, there's this tape of some kind and there's this insulation uh, and you install it on your interior. Uh, or by contrast, if we look at, uh, here's an example of spray foam. So we have spray foam insulation and the spray foam sticks to the metal and it uh, it will uh, cover all the gaps, uh, seals the interior up, um, prevents air movement through any gaps in the metal or any little crevices or seals up the bolts and everything, makes it really tight. Um, but you can see also in this image that uh, there's wood, there's some wood framing attached to the walls, okay? And that needs to be attached before the foam gets sprayed because you will never be able to um, find your bolts to bolt the wood framing to once it's sprayed with the foam. So you can see the ceiling, it's very thick with foam and uh, there's no way you'd be able to get down to those bolts and find them and clean them up to be able to thread a, a, a nut or an attachment of any kind to that. So um, I'm gonna recommend that you, any wood framing, you know, Understand your entire framing system, how you're going to frame your building, um, how your floor is going to be framed if you have a second floor, um, and how you're going to attach your ceiling framing. So if you're or your ceiling finished material, if you're going to drywall, if you're going to use wood, or if you're going to use metal, like corrugated metal, you see on some Quonset interiors, uh, a good because the corrugations can form to the curve really nicely. So any attachment to the shell with the wood you need to do before you spray any of your foam. And I think similarly, if you're going to go with the blanket insulation, I think you need to attach your wood framing first and then come in and, and put in your foam blankets after you've got your framing. Now there's another... Um, image if we scroll down that I saw here. Okay, so here's an example where they do have some interior walls and it looks like they built them before they sprayed this foam because you can see that the foam has gotten on the edges of the framing a little bit which is probably okay. But um, now if you have walls then you could frame uh, a ceiling structure that you would then attach wood or drywall to your ceiling and you could frame from wall to wall with your ceiling without actually attaching to the shell of the metal at all. So that's a good strategy for simplifying your ceiling framing by if you have interior walls, now if you have one giant open space and you want to finish the ceiling, this is not going to work. But if you've got interior partitions and you can get them in place. Now, in that case, you could do all of your insulation, whether it's spray foam or blankets, and then build your interior walls, and then frame your ceiling between the walls, and then finish out your space. Um, so it really depends on how big is your building, what is your interior configuration like, how do you plan to do the framing, uh, and then you can understand whether it's, is it critical to do your, um, your insulation as the next step. Can you go ahead and insulate it and then build your walls? Uh, so you need a complete plan, okay? Now, 
uh, I'm available uh, to help you work out your plan. Now you need to have a good plan to um, you know for your project and but you know you have your your design plans which are your floor plans and your construction drawings but you need to have a work plan right so hopefully I'm helping you with this general information but if you feel like you need some specific help getting your work plan uh, in place and understanding the process that you need to go through um, I've you know I've done this for 20 years in my architecture practice uh, with my individual clients and uh, I would be happy to work with you on your project shoot me a message through the Clever Moderns contact page or go to clevermoderns.com slash coaching and read about how I can help you with your project individually with some coaching. So uh, those are some basics about insulation and interior framing. I want to go to some specific pictures of our Quonset Hut build and I can show you how we um, we, and I also uh, wanted to talk about end walls because I had some questions about end walls also from the Facebook group. So let's shift over to the end walls. Let me talk about those. This is our, um, with the end walls, you've got, um, the ones I'm going to share now are from the, the images that came from Steelmaster. Okay, so the end walls that came from Steelmaster. So these are the typical end walls that were part of our building kit. And the first thing is the base plate. Okay, so we used a chalk line. We made a nice line on the ground and snapped it so that we had a nice blue chalk line on the concrete um, to line up the back edge of the base plate. And then you have to drill into the concrete. So it's the easiest way is to just set the base plate where you want it and use that as the template for drilling and then just drill directly where the holes are. You could try and measure and mark them and do it without putting the base plate down, but you've, if you've got your base plate there, just use that. It's easier. And one person standing on the base plate, one person um, drilling, and it, it's, it's pretty straightforward. And then on the sides, going um, from there, you've got uh, these arch trim panels, pieces, that are curved like the arch, and it's like an, it's like a, a trim piece that holds the wall in place. Okay, so uh, we found it easier to actually slot the holes, and we um, use my I use my grinder and and cut a slot here. Um, we we discovered with ours that it seemed like the um, these curved trims are really uh, made to the same diameter as the outside of the of the building, where it's a slightly larger diameter. Um, and we set our end walls in a little bit on the flat part of the arch. So you can also see that here. Okay, so our end wall is actually gonna, gonna be here. And that is a slightly smaller diameter than this outer part here uh, at the outside edge. And it was much easier to get these um, trim panel, uh, curved trim pieces in place when we uh, did these slots. So that was, we just made that up. I didn't really, um, that was not in the instructions, but that worked for us. And then uh, here's another view. Okay, so it was not, was not entirely clear also whether the uh, base plate should be on the outside or the inside of this arch trim. And so we did it this way, and it seemed to work fine. It was not clear that it really mattered one way or the other, to be honest. But this is what we did. And it worked It worked well. When you get to the uh, point where you're actually installing the panels, you want to start in the center and then work your way out. If you start on one side and try to work your way to the other side, you can get little errors and crookedness uh, in each panel that can build up over the whole thing that can really throw it off by the time you get to the other side. And you want this to look symmetrical and you want it to be as even as possible. So start in the center, work your way out with the end walls. And then you get these pieces on the ends that are um, not big enough for a panel. So they will uh, send you some flat pieces that you cut yourself. So here I am trimming and making a template out of a piece of craft paper that we had and um, so I taped it up in the in the right place trimmed it with a knife 
and made a template or a pattern piece and then I cut it with my grinder and then that uh, gave us the piece that then gets attached um, and bolted on. So it's it's pre-punched with these bolt holes okay and those are um, if I go back those are on the same exact spacing as these on the on the building kit on the end wall panels that they send you so that was easy to put together and here it is you go to this image so this is from the inside this is actually the other building so the end panel is not quite as big on this building on this wall but uh, and you can also see that I've I've gone ahead and at this point and I've added some caulking here between the uh, to close up this gap along the edge so between the arch trim and the and the actual arch panel I've sealed that up uh, but here's the here's the flat panel that I cut to fit bolted in place bolted to the last uh, of the full end wall panels there on the end all right that's how we put that together now you can see all the arch you can see all the bolts um, with a little bit of thread about three quarters of an inch of thread sticking in on the building so let's look at uh, how we use that to then attach the wood framing so we'll shift back a little bit to the wood framing here for for the next part so this shows how we attached wood framing to the exterior uh, inside the building but to the exterior shell and so you take the bolts that are sticking in and then I have one one here you use a coupling nut and a coupling nut is basically uh, about an inch or an inch and a quarter or something long and it's threaded like a like a nut but it's like a tube and it's hex shaped for a wrench and so you've got your bolt this is one of our bolts from Steelmaster and this is you know the metal shell is here and your bolt and you just screw these on inside the building and then you purchase um, threaded rods which uh, you can get at Home Depot or we I think we bought them in bulk on Amazon which was kind of easier and you can get these uh, in different lengths but we bought them all a foot long and a foot was kind of perfect they still stick out a little bit and you probably cut them off with bolt cutters or you can use your grinder and so you have your coupling nut on here and um, your coupling nut and you have your threaded rod and then you drill your 2x4 and bolt it on with a washer and that's pretty straightforward and so right now we just bolted them on to allow for the, um, the electricity so this is our electrical conduit running along there and here you have a picture of our one of our outlets in the building attached to that and that's how we did our framing so we will add more of these when we're going to do the ceiling over the whole interior of the hut and for right now we just have one row across the bottom of the building for our electricity so that is um, that is how we did that but you can see that you really want this attached nicely up against the metal and if you've got your insulation already on there you can't put this on after that very easily okay so uh, again it's you know it's sort of project specific uh, as to what your goals are what your budget is the spray foam is a lot more expensive uh, it's going to really seal your interior um, much more thoroughly um, and you know it's sort of uh, I can't really tell you which one is better because it's different for everyone I feel like okay so that's uh, that's our look at um, at end walls discussion of insulation and talked about framing a little bit on the interior so we will uh, we'll be back next week with more Quonset Q&A if you uh, if you haven't already you should go to clevermoderns.com and just go to the home page and scroll down to the bottom and check out, uh, sign up for our newsletter, right? Because we're building this property in Arizona, the Quampound. With, uh, we have two Quonset huts already up. And our third building starts in the spring. So this winter, we're a little bit in slowdown on the, um, 
construction, but it means I'm going to be putting a ton of content and more tutorials and adding more videos uh, and uh, keeping that going um, while I'm here in my office in LA over the winter. So sign up for the newsletter, join our Facebook group, and uh, let's build something great. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.